The first to northern Iraq in the city of Mosul, scene of a long battle between so-called Islamic State and Iraqi forces backed up by American air power. Mosul was where IS declared its caliphate back in 2014 after a lightning advance but now just a few hundred fighters remain, holed up in the narrow streets of the old city. And it was there that last night, IS blew up Mosul's famous Great Al-Nuri Mosque with its distinctive leaning minaret. It is where the IS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi gave a speech three years ago, proclaiming the establishment of his uh, caliphate. The BBC's Ferris Kalani is in Mosul and joins us live. Um, Ferris, what can you tell us? Yeah, it's confirmed now uh, then that uh, the mosque, the Grand Mosque and the Minaret destroyed completely uh, as uh, several sources here confirmed to us. I was there just a few hours, two or three hours before they destroyed uh, uh, the Grand Mosque and the Minaret, filming with the counter-terrorism force. Uh, they were just a few uh, hundred meters, not, or literally dozens of meters from the mosque. I spent two hours with them. I, man I managed to film the minority and the uh, fence of the mosque or the wall and they were excited, uh, ready to cross in the next few hours and I sent the news for the BBC that they are expecting to cross this these few meters in the, in, the, in, the, in the dawn tomorrow and just two hours after we left we hear the news that they blew it up. Uh, both the Grand Mosque and the Minorate where the Caliphate, or sorry, where Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi announced or declared his Caliphate. Ferris, um, IS has, has claimed through its, uh, one of its uh, messaging services that it was, an, it was a US coalition airstrike that destroyed the mosque. Um, from what you understand, is there any chance that that could have been the case? It's very difficult to be done by uh, the coalition or any air strikes. The fighters, from Iraq, from especially from the uh, counter-terrorism force, were very close to the mosque. They were ready to cross these few meters. If if you look at the damage, if you look at the satellite footage which was released by the Iraqi army a few minutes ago, uh, and it shows the, the the destruction in the place, it's impossible to be done by uh, the coalition. They would kill a lot of Iraqi forces or Iraqi fighters near the most effort done by the, by the coalition. It's clear that it's done by some kind of explosives inside the most. What I what support this idea as well, as I said before, the fighters were very excited. I've interviewed uh, three or four of the commanders there. They all were ready and put plans for the next few hours how to cross and where, what to do here, what to do there, coordinating with other forces and the other uh, uh, front lines in that because as you know the advance is happening from the east uh, west, uh, from sorry from the uh, north south and the west so they were coordinating to to start advance in the next few hours and then this happened Ferris Kalani uh, live in Mosul and this is what he told news hour last night I was there just a few hours two or three hours before they destroyed the Grand Mosque and the Minoret filming with the counter-terrorism force they were just dozens of meters from the mosque. I managed to film the minority and the fence of the mosque or the wall. And just two hours after we left, we heard the news that they blew it up both the Grand Mosque and the minority, where Abu Bakr al Baghdadi announced or declared his caliphate. Well, with me in the studio now, another of our colleagues from BBC Arabic, Bashir al Zaidi. And uh, good to have you with us, uh, Bashir. Um, you're from Mosul. What was your reaction when you saw those images of the mosque being destroyed? It was shock and sadness, James. I was expecting that, to be honest. I, I was expecting that uh, one day ICE militants would blow up the mosque uh, for some reason. Attention, please. This is an emergency broadcast to notify listeners that if you are in a state of shock, you are not in a state of expectation. Thank you very much for joining us. That, uh, you know, the, the security experts anticipate that ISIS will, will transform from being a caliphate into being an insurgency. So this war, maybe maybe the caliphate part, the, the, the territory part of it might be over soon, but the fight against extremism uh, is not over. And, and, and Mosul is, is, a, is a landmark but obviously ISIS has still pockets in, uh, in the Kirkuk province and of course uh, they have managed to resurface in some of uh, liberated territories in, in, in Diyala 
and Anbar. So the danger is not behind us yet. No, actually, because uh, it is uh, very symbolic. It is import, uh, an important symbol of, of Mosul. When you, when you talk about the leaning minaret, you are talking about Mosul. It is the, as you know, when you have the identity card and there's a photo. The photo of Mosul is this minaret. And now well, so rather like the Eiffel Tower is for Paris. Exactly, example. exactly. And we are talking about 845 years of survival. And it is just blown out in a few seconds, destroying an important part of the history of the city. Uh, let alone, uh, like, as I said, the identity of it. Uh, just out of interest, I mean, why, why it is very distinctive the way it leans. Why, why is that? There are several ex uh, explanations for that. Uh, one of them was saying that uh, because of the uh, winds from the west pushing it towards the east, so it was like leaning uh, across the time. Uh, another explanation was saying that because uh, the uh, architect who built the minaret, he deliberately made it lean uh, slightly towards the east, just in case if it falls, it would fall into the courtyard of the uh, mosque, and it would save the civilians living around the James. Uh, the mosque is the second mosque built in Mosul, and the old city of Mosul was built around it, so it was the base for it, it was the seat of Mosul. So, as you say, it had been there for 800 years, it's not there anymore. Uh, the Iraqi government, and indeed the Americans too, say it's a sign of the desperation and, and the defeat was the word they used of so-called Islamic State. I, is that right? I believe that is right to an extent, because it is where uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi declared himself as a caliph on the 4th of July 2014. Um, this uh, mosque enjoyed a huge importance for both parties, for the Iraqi forces, for the Iraqi government, and for IS militants as well. Because if the Iraqi forces would seize this uh, uh, mosque, they would say, oh, this is where al-Baghdadi declared himself a caliph, this is where the uh, so-called Islamic State were taking it as a capital, and now we are here, this is our trophy, we are victorious. So I believe IS militants blow up the uh, minaret and the mosque just to deprive the Iraqi government, this sense of victory. So, in other words, if we if we can't hold on to it, then nor can you. Exactly. It's like this scorched earth tactics by the uh, Islamic states, or the so-called Islamic states. Children's States. agency UNICEF estimates that more than five million children need help. Well, Peter Hawkins is with UNICEF in Baghdad. So what's been the impact of those three years of the so-called IS Caliphate on local children? We had some very good evidence that children fleeing the west of Mosul at the moment are being targeted and shot alongside members of their families. I've also talked to a number of families who've said that neighbors or other people in, in their area before they fled, um, as they prepared to flee, so the so-called Islamic State has gone round, brutalized their children, killing them at times to make them stay in, in western Mosul and act as shields for the ongoing conflict. But the, the critical element here is children are not the perpetrators of this conflict. They are the innocent victims of this conflict. And it, it's against international humanitarian law that they have been kept, at times injured, and, and at times have been killed uh, inside a conflict which is not of their own making.